<laughs> oh my god. The nightmare is finally over. It's over. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. I couldn't believe a damn thing that... I couldn't believe anything the other day. Everything that... That Howie Roseman said about him making a team and him showing up to practice every day. I was like, there is no freaking way this guy is going to be here. Between all the rumors that came out yesterday on Rager all day about the Vikings having serious interest, trade market heating up, and I just couldn't believe it. And not even just that, you trade him to a team where Justin Jefferson, I mean, it's just so funny. JJ goes to the Seattle to, to be to watch DK Metcalf, where he was didn't even make that team, that roster. And then JJ and then Rager goes to the Vikings to watch Justin Jefferson. It's like tying him up to a chair and like and how he's pretty much like pointing at Justin Justin Jefferson saying, This is what you were supposed to be. Okay. They traded Rager to the Vikings for two picks. Okay. A seventh rounder, what? A seventh rounder for next year and a fifth rounder that could turn to a fourth. A fourth that could turn, yeah. A fifth that could turn to a fourth. I guess that's, that's what the picks are right now. I mean, you got it's two picks. I mean, you got two picks for him. You got two picks. How can I even complain about that? I said to myself, how. How can this man make this team? I was going to make another video on a rant. I said, I ain't doing it because I'm just going to, it's going to be like a 15 minute video. I'm not going to stop. Like when Rager, when he was talking, when Roseman was talking all these nice things about Rager the other day, I was just like, there, there's just no way. Like I could see maybe if he made the team when, you know, he was a good special teamer, a good returner, but just couldn't be a receiver, just couldn't play that position at all. Then I could understand why they wanted to keep him. But this guy did not contribute at all. They they overhyped him during this training camp when all of us were pretty much tricked that he was actually a changed wide receiver. Or I mean, I I still want to trade him regardless or get rid of him. But during you know he came in the he came in the training camp in shape. He was playing really well. They were saying all these good things. He was catching everything, and Rager was having fantastic days. And then when we saw him on tape, we were just like. I saw no difference in Rager and what he was doing. So I'm so glad because there's so many people that defend Rager and I'm totally, you know, I totally respect that, but it's over. It's done. It's over with no more Jalen Rager. We got two picks for him. I don't care if they're th number, you know, th third day picks. I don't care if they're late round picks. I expected a seventh round pick. I expected a seventh round pick next year for him. And that's what we got. He's got no value, but how he gets, but, but how he trades him for two picks is ridiculous. So, you know, there's going to be people that hate this because people thought that Rager needed another chance. And I understand that, but I'm sorry, but it, it's not working out for me right now. He needs a new team, new environment, new fan base. He just needs a new experience somewhere else. And that's where we go. So who knows? Maybe we're going to see how much of a snake that he actually is down the road when he's going to start talking crap. Who knows? Because he's going to open his mouth sooner or later about what happened with Philly. And we're probably going to hear news about it. There's no doubt about it. We'll hear news about it. Okay? I would never doubt that because that's what players do. And I think he's the type of player that would do that. And usually you give these receivers three years, but I, I couldn't sit through another year of, of not even just that, but him being a number five this year, a first round pick out of number five receiver on this roster and, and just not doing anything. Can't do that, man. Can't do that. I couldn't sit there and watch that and waste a roster spot away this year between his just, just, just a bad pick. He was just a bad pick. Yeah, maybe there were times where there were flashes where he played well or there were little things that he did that were well, but they just weren't consistent every single year. And his his psyche was the biggest problem, the biggest problem that I can I could say, okay? Any little thing that happened when the game's on the line, when he misses a catch, it affects him. He can't come back and make a play. It's just, and it not only does it, 
Does it hurt him for a game mentally? It hurts him for multiple games going into the next game and the next game and the next game and the friggin' so, the weak ass social media post, which I couldn't even stand. Okay. I just couldn't stand it. And it was really annoying. It's like, oh, it's like Rager knows he's going to get a lot of attention when he deletes everything. And then he'll like, Put a stupid quote up every day about, oh, striving for greatness, blah, 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 blah. You know, don't slip up on a banana peel today. You know, stupid stuff like that. You know, I just couldn't stop. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it anymore. You know, like when we trade for AJ Brown, he deleted his whole Instagram and all his stuff. Like he was just like pissed off. We, you know what I mean? Just stuff like that. The Eagles put themselves in a position to where re- they... The Eagles put Rager in a position this past training camp offseason to where he really had to show out because you, they trade for Pascal. That's Nick's boy. They trade for A.J. Brown. They, you know, they signed Pascal. They trade for A.J. Brown. Quez Watkins was already here. And they brought in a lot of receivers. I understand it's camp. You got to bring in like 11, 12 receivers. It is what it is. But they brought in a lot of bodies at that position. It is what it is, guys. Like, I'm not upset about this. How th- Really, the only move that wasn't a great move this year, the only move was Derek Barnett. That's really it. Like, he almost fixed every position this year. He fixed our linebacker core. He got a number two corner. He got the safety of the future. And not only that, he just brought back three players to the practice squad and Devin Allen, Britton Covey, and Deion Kane is back. So I would expect Kane is probably going to move up. Kane is probably going to be to the active roster most likely. Okay, which is a really good thing. I'm glad they brought all three of those receivers back. They none of, I think I don't know if some of them got claimed or they were all wavered, I guess I could say. I think Kane did clear waivers, so he came back. Um, but I'm not upset about this. I'm not. I'm far from, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of watch this. I've had enough of worrying about it this whole offseason. What's going to happen with this guy? Is he going to make the team? What the hell is going to happen? Howie Roseman wasn't stupid, guys. And it's really showing me that, you know what? Howie Roseman may have messed up some picks this year. I mean, some picks to pass you know, a few years, whatnot, whatever the case may be for, for a long time. But I got to say this, man, there's been a lot more that's been into this whole thing with Howie Roseman. I think part of it is, I think Rager was definitely his pick. I felt like he did draft him, but there's other picks out there that I think Lurie's been in the mix for. I don't know how a GM does a total 360. Okay. How does a GM turn around in two years? I just don't get it. Okay, there's more to it than Howie Roseman just making bad picks. Somebody else was involved. Lurie was involved. Uh, Andy Wydell was was pushed back on Howie. There, there must have been something going on because there's no way that he makes it, that Howie does this well. Like, there's no way he had no pushback. Somebody must have been interfering with what he wanted to do and he was... He couldn't make his own decisions or something because this this is just... I've never seen such a perfect offseason in my life. Okay, this is probably one of the most exciting, one of the most entertaining, flat out, crazy off seasons for the Eagles. They can match this with a with the regular season. Sky's the limit. Hurts works out. Sky's the limit. Both coordinators do their jobs. Sky's the limit for this team and what they could possibly do. You know, I could rant about this for a long time, you know, and I'm and I'm glad. Look, I give him more respect for rewriting the wrongs that he did. I don't care if he doesn't admit it. He doesn't have to admit it to me. He does. Howie Roseman does things through his actions. OK, he knows what the fans want. He's a master genius at trades. Not even just a cap now. And now we're starting to see that he could draft well the past couple years. And Rager has been a product and an example of. Giving a guy a chance that never really deserved it in the first place. Much as I was excited for Jalen Rager because I thought he was this big speed guy they could just throw anywhere as a wide receiver or line him up anywhere they wanted or be that Tavon Austin type player, but a lot higher than that. It, you know, it is what it is. You know, I was wrong. A lot of people were wrong. I was excited about the pick. You know, it is what it is. You know, you get excited about certain players and, you know, you want to support these players. But when you've seen what you've seen the past 
two seasons out of Rager. Not good. Not good. So I don't know what the money situation, dead cap, whatever the case may be with that. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. But uh, if they even saved any money from it. And I don't really care. I know it's not going to be that much. Even if it's dead cap, how much could it be? Two, three million. I don't know what it could be. It can't be that much. You know what I mean? So, um, other than that, you know, I'm just glad. You know, they, they're getting two picks. They're getting two picks for them. So, I can't even complain about it. I can't, you know. Rager is gone. JJ is gone. A new era in Philadelphia. God knows what's going to happen next. I mean, trust me, there are so many changes being made right now. And you got rid of the two biggest mistakes that we were left with this year. Howie Roseman put JJ. See, when we thought they put JJ to tight end, they thought we, they were just we thought they were justifying that pick. They weren't justifying it. They literally set JJ up in a in a in a lose lose situation because he had too many too much talent in front of him at tight end. And then trading for AJ Brown, signing Zach Pascal with Quez Watkins already being here and Deion Kane already out showing Rager in literally one game, one game. 60 something yards versus the Browns, one game and six catches. Like and I said to myself, how is this guy still here after that? You know what I mean? JJ third game. You know, last year, gets 40-plus yards and a touchdown and makes the team. Just ridiculous, dude. Roseman is turned around. I'm I, telling you, it's, there's something going on. The freedom of Howie Roseman to do whatever he wants, apparently, this is what he does. He has common sense. So, <laughs> I'm I'm beyond happy. Really, the only bad sign we have this year right now is really is really Derek Barnett. That's it. Derek Barnett's the only guy. But Rager's not here. You got two picks. You got a seventh round pick for next year now. That's awesome. Great. Keep getting these picks. We need as many picks for next year's draft as possible. Howard Roseman has pulled unbelievable trades. And this is definitely one of them. So... All right, guys, I will see you guys on the next one. Let me know in the comment section below, how do you guys feel about Jalen Rager getting traded? Sorry about this huge rant. Sorry it was long. It was almost 13 minutes long. But hey, we got to talk about it for a long time. But I'm very happy. So I will see you guys on the next one. Kick squad up. Follow us five. Peace out, guys. On. Yeah. Peace.